Morning, everybody. So we're here in Northeast Minneapolis at Mill City Roasters. My name is Derek De La Paz, and I'm here with the 30 kilogram roasting machine and my great coworker, Joe Morocco. Hey guys. Awesome. So we're going to do a little walk around on the 30 kilogram roasting machine, and we're just going to kind of talk through what a Mill City roasting machine is, but also all the bells and whistles and the advantages you're going to get if you purchase a Mill City roaster. Let's do it. All right. Let's do this. Are you ready for it, Joe? Oh man, okay. I'm so excited okay, about great. this machine. Let's do this. <laughs> great, cool. Okay, so the first thing I noticed in this machine is it's got a really tall hopper. Yeah, well, this is a 30 kilo, so that means that, of course, it's gonna be a bigger machine. Now, got it. to put in, that into perspective, I think a lot of times people think of um, a 30 kilo machine or 60 kilo machine as being this giant monster of a machine. Definitely. When you and I started roasting coffee, a uh, 30 kilo machine was actually kind of one of the smaller machines. So this is still considered a smaller machine, but this Definitely. is a, a machine that's large enough to where you're probably gonna need a step stool to get up to the top hopper. Um, and so we've done a couple of things to help this process be easier on you. One thing is we've added the pneumatics to the 30 kilo machine. If okay. you get a 20 kilo, you're gonna be popping the door open yourself, but here you push a button, which we'll show you in a little bit, and the air actually opens that gate for you. Okay, I was wondering about that because I was just thinking to myself, there's not too many roasting giants that I've met yet. So definitely pneumatics would help. Wow, yeah. that's, that's super helpful. Excellent. Okay, and I see we have actually a really fancy light on this one too. Yeah, definitely. Um, the light is gonna shine right where you need it to shine. We'll turn that on here in a minute. Yeah, it's, it's weird how like sometimes you don't think about the light, it's so important. You need, you need yes. accurate good light when you're roasting. Great. You okay. are the one that's roasting the coffee and cooking it, so if you can't see that color, <laughs> If you can't see what's happening, you could very easily burn your coffee. So. Yeah, how, how often do we cook in the dark? Yeah, well, Thanks. too often, but. <laughs> totally. All right, now I see a plethora of thermocouples. Yes, thermocouples. Okay. Uh, we at Mill City really believe that information is your friend. The more information that you can get from your system, the better. But we also don't want you to just simply have raw information. We want you to have that information controllable as well. So I'm gonna show you kind of where the probes are now and then we'll show you where the controls are here in a minute. Nice. Um, here on this machine, the, the topmost probe is actually not digital. This is just a regular thermocouple. In the event that um, something were to happen to the digital system, you need to have information sure. at your fingertips right. to be safe right, right, right. and still be able to roast. Yeah. So this is an analog thermocouple Excellent. for the exhaust. Okay. However, the information that you're gonna get on your um, data on the screen that you're using most likely mm -hmm. is going to come from, first we have an environmental temperature oh, probe yeah. up here. Sure. Um, and then we have the one that runs to your PID system is right here. Nice. And the PID controller, I'll show you on the panel okay, here in a we'll moment. Okay, we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh-huh, and then further down, we have what we call the bean temperature probe, which Excellent. is put into the door. Right, 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 so it's gonna be right down to that bean mass. Exactly. Wow, now, that's really nice. A lot of roasters would, um, a lot of roasters are built with only a, an exhaust probe, yep. and that exhaust probe is digital and a bean temperature probe. Some roasters are actually built with only a bean temperature yep. probe, which I don't quite understand why. <laughs> we really like the environmental temperature probe to be very close to the exhaust, but you're not roasting coffee in the exhaust chamber <laughs> or in the air. exhaust system. Yep. You're Definitely. roasting coffee in the drum. So we want to know what the air temperature is in that system where your oh, coffee is actually cooking gotcha. before that air is out of the system and changes further. Totally. Yeah. And so then you can take all of that information and kind of triangulate uh, how your coffee is taking on heat. Sure. Along with these temperature probes in the front, we also have one in the back that lets you know what the temperature of the air going into your system is, or in other words, the energy load that your coffee is going to experience. Awesome. We'll point that out here in a minute too. Okay, great. So I noticed there's a, quite a few gauges too, very specifically the magnahelic. Can yeah. you explain that a little bit? Yeah, the, the um, oven that you're cooking your coffee in changes. Yes. So the environment that your coffee is in while it's cooking is important for you to understand, we believe. Right. And so we've added a magnahelic, which is basically gonna give you your pascals of pressure um, in the system. And right, as you change right. airflow okay. or as your coffee exerts energy and expands in the system um, or as it releases steam, that's sure. going to change things in the environment. And wow. we believe that you should kind of know what wow. that's what's happening. That's there. amazing. Yeah. 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 That's a little bit like weather. Predict Definitely. Predictive. You know yeah. What I mean? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And uh, the trier. I mean, yeah. Sometimes we forget about the basics, but. 
Yeah, a lot of times on a larger machine, you'll see a giant trier. Giant trier, um, I've seen we, that. We like to keep it handleable. <laughs> Makes sense, and you're not so, scooping out a ton of beans every time. Super slick. Yep, yep. Easy to control, easy to put in, drops down in place. Uh, you don't have to fiddle with it a whole bunch. Uh, the scoop on, the, on our triers um, is a scoop that doesn't drop a lot of coffee when you're pulling it out. Right, right. It's super easy to use. And what's this this odd triangle uh, that's kind of attached to it? That's the weight, so if I put it in yeah. wrong, it just moves down. So if you accidentally put a trier in upside down and it stays there, your coffee in the trier will start to cook wrong. You'll burn the coffee on the bottom and then not cook the coffee on the top. So we want to avoid that by having that nice smooth yeah. adjustment. Great. Yeah. And then I see this is kind of a little different thing too from Mill City Machine. Exactly. Even though uh, we have the pneumatics on this um, to open the door, um, in the event that your system were to shut down, like let's say the power goes out or something, Definitely. you can Real still life. open that door without using that pneumatic system. Awesome. That's super helpful. And we also have right here that gas gauge in, this, in the same event. Right. If the electricity goes out, you can see that um, you have pressure analog and, you and not digital. Right, right, That's right. right. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, let's go down here. This is this is very exciting. Yeah. The lovely control panel, lots of different buttons. I even see some I think VFDs on this panel. So should we light these buttons up? Yeah, good call. Let's do that. Let's, okay, let's, great. let's fire this thing up. All right, let's do it. Okay. Very exciting. Oh, yep, and that's a little alarm to let us know that it's time to, you know, roast coffee. Be exactly. focused, be present. You know, this is, this is when the rubber hits the road. If you, uh, if you at home can't tell, this is actually running right now. It's a very quiet machine. Very quiet. So if somebody is in the, the vicinity of this machine and they don't hear this turn on, sure. they could possibly get hurt. So right. that alarm alerts everybody. Right. Get That's out of the way. No. Totally. This is time for work. It's right. serious business right. time. Industrial equipment. Exactly. Makes sense. So I'm going to take a moment and, and show you the pneumatics here. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was so quiet and smooth. Super smooth. Um, you can Ooh. also charge your drum. Oh, yeah. Which opens up the gate yeah. there. Excellent. I like that a lot. Yeah, super simple at the push of a button. Um, your cooling fan and your cooling arms are here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to look at the cooling tray here in a minute. Okay. We also have some stop gates on that, some sensors that allow you to actually turn it on from the front of oh, the wow. machine. Wow, that's excellent. Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here we also have drum speed. Okay. We have our exhaust fan and we have our burner adjustment. Oh, now, what's really interesting, interesting. yeah, right. exactly. What's really interesting about the new upgrades that we're doing on all of our machines that are six kilos and above is that you'll have digital adjustment on all of these. Not only will you have digital adjustment, but that will go to your um, profile software. Oh, wow. So on the graph, you'll actually see, see a line for adjustments. whatever you choose to put on wow. that information. That's, that's next level. It's amazing. Right, right. So we already wow. saw our, our uh, three temperature probes up front, our one temperature probe right. in the back. Right. Drum speed would be a line if you so choose it to be. Got it. Exhaust fan. Uh, those two are monitored by Hertz that are going to the motors. So you'll see the, the amount of Hertz that you're using. Wow, that's good data. Gas pressure, that is going to be adjusted. That uh, will look a little bit different on the next iteration of this. Okay. It'll be buttons that you push up, buttons sure. that you push down. Sure, 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 sure. I hear that's going to be a little faster, potentially. It'll be faster. Uh, because right now, if I make an adjustment, it'll kind of make the gas adjust a little bit, you know, in, at a lag, almost like stepping on a scale. Right. There's a Got little you. bit of a delay. Sure, sure, sure. But if you have that uh, button, it just jumps. You know exactly what stages you're jumping up to. Very so cool. much more uh, quick and controllable. And more accurate, I want to say. Yeah. More repeatable, maybe. Exactly. Great. And then you could technically use that software to tell the gas to adjust when you want it to adjust, which is super cool. Wow. That's um, really neat. Then you have your timer switch. Of course, timer. on your profile software, you'll have a timer on that as well. Right. But in case you know your computer all of a sudden goes through some kind of an upload, and right, <laughs> you're right, in the right. middle of roasting. Right, right, right. You still have all of the information here, and you have the information here, so it's a triple check. Oh, to say redundancies. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's not only good for safety, totally. but it's also good just simply for understanding your system. Yeah. So if something is off, you know exactly what to do. Very well. Yeah, yeah. A little flag. You notice that little difference off that one thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that could be the difference for sure. 
And if you're roasting along and you notice that, wow, I'm, I'm at the same hertz that I was last time on my exhaust fan, right. but for some reason my temperature is not getting where it needs right, to go. Right, right. Now I know because I have so much information from my system that I need to check something. Right. Either maybe right. I put in too much coffee sure, sure, or sure. maybe my ducts Duck are, getting are getting a little clogged out. You know what I mean? Nailed right, it. Right, right, right. Exactly right. right. Or maybe even have a leak. Sometimes a duct will pop a, pop a clamp or something. Absolutely. Yeah. And a duck, when a duck pops a clamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so go wrong. understanding your system is vital to roasting coffee well and right. repeatable. Repeatability. Yep. Yep, definitely. Get Losing a new coffee. Yep. Get a new coffee. You uh, can, can kind of cut um, to the chase on getting that coffee roasted well. Right. But then that repeatability part, man, yeah. just simplifies it so, so much. It's excellent. Okay. So also this is the... Um, PID, I know I mentioned mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. higher of the two probes sure. here on the left-hand side. Yep, yep. That's the temperature probe that basically um, has a shutoff on it. So if you can set this shutoff for whatever temperature you want. So in nice. the event that your coffee gets out of control, sure, sure. If you, if you, whatever yeah. reason, get overheated and faint in the middle of a roast, right, right, right. Everything is set up to where your gas will shut off. Um, you also have, uh, sensors on the uh, updated version of this and on the 60 kilo version of this wow. that you can set a high point for discharge oh, excellent. and you can set a temperature right. for uh, charging your roast. So if you Got want it. to, you can put the coffee up there and your system will know mm -hmm. when it's time to put the coffee in the drum and your system will know as a safety feature sure. when to drop the coffee out. Wow. That's yeah. Helpful. So that nothing goes awry. Of right, course, right, right. we like to be in control of that more, but as a stop gap, that's great. Right. And as a roaster, you have to fill up your, you have to get, prepare your batches. That's right. The coffee doesn't show up pre-portioned for your batches. Exactly. So having maybe a minute to like warm your machine and go fill up the next batch is super helpful while, That's it, right. while it gets ready to get to charge temp. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. And here, um, this is the new data, uh, system. It's a PLC system as opposed to just the old little fidget that oh, connects yeah. directly right. to the yep, thermocouples. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we know the fidget well, for sure. The thermocouples will connect to the data processing system, wow. upload through that PLC system okay. directly to your computer. So if we were to have all of this information just going to that little fidget, it would be kind of like uh, pointing a fire hose at a dog dish and trying to fill it. Got it. Right, <laughs> it's right, just right, way right. too much information. This takes the information, processes it, and it processes it in a very smart way right. and then uh, gives you viable information that you can then apply to your roasting. Right, and then repeat. I want to show you kind of what it looks yeah. like. Is that yeah, cool? Yeah, yeah, well, let's open this up. Yeah, I was wondering yeah. the same thing. What's under this? You know, a lot of times when you open up a, a roaster and you see the electrical um, system inside, it looks like spaghetti. But the engineers that, that we are working with Oh, yeah. Do an exceedingly good job oh, yeah. of um, making sure that everything, everything is completely is, organized. Yeah. Were anything ever to go wrong here, um, it's very easy to just unplug and oh, right. plug in. Right, 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 right. New the parts. Fix. Yeah, exactly. I see a lot of name brand stuff in there. That's oh, like, yeah. That's top notch components. This is top right of the here. line stuff. Yep, definitely that. I think a lot of times people think, oh, it's a Chinese built machine. It's it's just going to be, you Knock know, off junk. parts or whatever. But yeah. That's that's what I like to call the genetic fallacy. Yeah, you're right. You totally <laughs> Just thinking it. about something from where it's from yeah. and, a, and associating value with it. The, um, we are building machines that are the best machines yeah. on the market, in my opinion. Right. So, and the world is global. You know what I mean? Parts yeah. are coming from all over the world. That's right. It's funny so too. This is a, lot top of think, the line. a lot of times we think of a roasting machine too as just like a drum and a and a shaft and all that. And that's that's some high tech stuff down there. Exactly. Yeah. That's more like spaceship. Yeah. And really, in all honesty, the hardware components of a roaster, that is nuts and bolts. Nuts it's and metal. Bolts. It's fire. Right. It's air. That I mean, it's super simple. Very much. But gathering clear data and information that then you can apply to your roasting, yes. that's where you need some finesse and some technology. Definitely. And the technology of this machine is second to none. Right. So really cool. Cool. Thank you for that. All right. Should yeah. we move around to the to the cooling tray? Are you gonna... Yeah, yeah. Let's check okay. it out. Nice. Yeah, this cooling tray is beautiful. I like the size of it, you know, like that's definitely a part of a cooling tray is a proportion. This seems like very, a very lovely proportion of tray 
you know, to roaster diameter, depth and stuff like that? Oh man, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the depth of the cooling tray, um, a lot of uh, roasters are engineered basically to just cool the amount of coffee that you roast in one batch. Sure, sure. What happens if you have an accident and another batch drops Definitely on top that. of that coffee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What happens um, if you need to blend coffees? I've this, used this before. Exactly. You can just blend <laughs> in the cooling right? tray. Yeah, totally. So the depth of this is big enough to where you have... Two batches, I want to say. It's a tool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I can put two batches in here to do a post blend. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, that's money. A hundred percent. And it's a pretty powerful motor too, I imagine. Definitely. Hey, could you do me a favor? Sure. Open that gate and see what happens. Okay. I'm a little worried, but I'll do it. Go for it. Whoa. Uh -huh. Wow. So now I can basically, that'll help me aid in getting coffee out of the front. You know what I mean? Exactly. When I'm at the front of the machine, I don't have to go around and then potentially lose some coffee. I have full control right here. Yeah. Actually, leave that open for a second. Let me okay. show you something else. Nice. So keep that open. Open this. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, so they work together. At the front of the machine, sure, you sure. can turn on and turn off your cooling tray right, arms. Right, now, right, right. A lot of times we think about this gate as being, well, we've heard some people say it's kind of annoying, it gets in the way, you can't groom your coffee. Got it, got well, it, Well, it got also it. keeps your fingers intact. I it like that. It also keeps your arms on. Um, it's a safety feature, of course, but mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. also doubles as this utilitarian yeah, very switch much so. that you can use mm -hmm. while you're at the front of the roaster. How right, many times right, right. have you accidentally drop coffee and you need to all of a sudden uh, have that off and you have to run around the roaster in order to turn off the arms and oh, by yeah. that time there's coffee everywhere. Oh very, very much so and yeah, man, honestly where I used to work we used to do a lot of blending and yep. we, we'd roast full batches that would be put into four different blends so we'd be portioning out that full batch into different little increments like 40 pounds for this you know blend 20 pounds for this blend totally. so you could have a scale and you could be right here portioning out your batch handing it over to the blending team that's Super helpful. Weigh and fill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right exactly. there. Yep, 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 yep. Wow, that's great. Should I shut it? Yeah, okay. go ahead and shut it. Uh, that's really smooth too. And, I, and you can see I'm doing it with one hand. Yeah, you know, and absolutely. That's, that, that's helpful too, you know? <laughs> like, I always, always thought if I could be the ultimate roach if I was an octopus. So having extra hands <laughs> would help, you know what I mean? But that's right. That's me being weird. Technology gives you more hands. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, you will also notice that we are, we're kind of getting tall and getting short. We, we aren't uh, propping this up to make the roaster look extra tall here today. <laughs> uh, this roaster is ready to ship and it got shipped here. So we're just showing you while it's still on a shipping pallet. Um, but of course, when you get it into your space, it's going to be on legs, just like all of our other roasters. Uh, but I did want to point out that this whole cooling tray apparat apparatus is uh, right. an attachment a to piece. the roaster itself. Sure, 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 sure. I was noticing that. Yep, so you can actually pull that whole apparatus off. You unplug it, right, right, and right. you can pull it away. You can get all inside of it if you need to. Important. Um, but for easier access, we also have the uh, gate right here. Right, right, right. A little door so you can get into the underside of your cooling tray. That's exactly right. Which is, most roasters would know, that's really important. Yeah, so. Oh yeah, definitely. It's large enough to where if you have any uh, yeah. child laborers. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We should, yeah. Just kidding. Interdimensional. I can crawl inside of there. Interdimensional creatures that would be able to go in there and do some tooling. Definitely. I like that. Get inside of there with a vacuum, clean it all out. But you also want to get in there, you know, once every six months or so and just really give it a scrubbing. That's, and so yeah. you can pull this whole thing away and wow. get all up inside of there. Wow. In the event that you have any kind of motor issue, you can pull this away pull that motor out really right, easily. Right, right. Everything is super that uh, is helpful. easy to to do maintenance on. Right, 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 which is in the beginning it's it's all beauty and brand new, but as we know as roasters as time goes on it's about service, it's about maintenance. That's exactly. the key, keeping your machine clean. The easier yep. it is to clean, the better your coffee tastes. Exactly. It's awesome. And you can see the ducting would come off of here and go to your cooling fan. Okay, okay. Um, on the 60 kilo machine, it's actually gonna be propped up higher. Oh, and right. you're gonna have that ducting go underneath. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's nice. incredible. It's gonna be super cool. So it'll cool. shrink the footprint down a little bit. Yep. That's good, that helps. And you can see up here how the exhaust comes out and mm -hmm. heads back to the back of the machine. Sure. Also on the 60 kilo, that's all gonna be under wrap. Ooh. So it's a big dome. It, it kinda reminds me of a, an old fashioned uh, horse and buggy, like the old. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like a curved the wagons. top. And yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. that's cute. That's gonna be neat. I like that. Yeah. All right, so then we, now we have this, uh, this, this panel we can access under the burners, yeah. I wanna say? Yep, easy access. 
and we'll, we build this in on both sides, so whichever side. We do recommend that whenever you are installing your roaster, you have enough clearance from the wall that you can really get on both sides of the roaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are safety reasons for this, and there are also maintenance reasons for this. Good tip on that one, definitely. Yep. Like, yeah, cr cr crushing your roaster into a small spot, not having room to move around the roaster, that, that's, that's very dangerous. So, Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, because yeah. that's, that's something that you, we don't always think about. And, you know, a, a roaster, the drum inside of here is kind of a, it's a turning oven. Yeah. And it kind of floats back and forth sure. according to how you adjust it. Right, 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 so right. So sometimes as things heat up and cool down, yeah. the metal expands totally. and contracts. It expands and So shrinks. that drum can kind of shrink back from the face. Yep, yep, And then yep. little particles can fall down here. And so we've, we've put in a tray on all of our roasters that you can easily pull out. Wow. And just get in there, clean this out. Sure, sure. It's not gonna damage your machine if you get a little fire in oh, here yeah, or something exactly. like that. And the tolerances are really minim minimal. Oh, so yeah. like chaff won't even go on there. Definitely. That'll grab your little chaff even. Yep. You know what I mean? So then you don't have that like burning chaff fire in one morning because you, exactly you emptied right. your tray the night before. Yep. Sweet. And we give you super easy access to the manifold down right, here. Right, that too. If you wanna check this out. Yeah, 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 right. It's always exciting to be able to get at your burners if you have to. And you can see how many burners are in this system. Sure. And we like to keep the burners inside and kind of up yeah. so that heat really remains inside. Right, right, right. A little more control. Yep. So that when you get that low flame, you still have some, some heat going into the energy, going into the, into the coffee. Absolutely. That's You're not great. just energizing the space around the roaster. There You're you energizing go. your coffee. Yeah, yeah. No, this is a beautiful, clean setup under here. Yeah. I love it. All, All right. right. Let me close this up. Okay, let's do that. All right, should we uh, Put continue our little journey around the machine? I think we should. Okay, let's cool. check out the back. I know sometimes the back side of the machine is, is kind of like you're saying, you stick it in the corner, you stick it in the back, and you don't really think about the back side. Yeah. But I've had some really like, good experiences at the back side of my roaster, <laughs> just to be honest, sorry. Yeah, so, I mean, a lot of times you go to the back of a roaster and it's kind of a jumbled mess of chains or belts or all different danger, things. Danger, danger, Will Exactly, Robinson. here. It's super tight. Wow. Um, the first thing that I notice up here is our uh, air fan. Yeah. This is the fan yeah. that's pulling the air through the system. I can feel that air coming out of this uh, right. duct right here. That's hardy. Um, of course, you'll have another fan for your cooling tray so you can cool right. while you're roasting. Important. Yep. Full control. We also uh, mount this fan to where it's very easily accessed. Right. You can easily pull it off, sure. take it apart, Got clean it, it out, right. get it back. It's not like a, a, a puzzle that you have to figure out. This <laughs> is pretty simple and stuff I, for me. And maintenance. I even see there's a little room for adjustment under there so Absolutely. you can get that perfect fit. Because that's always yeah. a nightmare when you get to tighten that last bolt and nothing put, goes back together. Exactly. Wow, that's key. You can get it in place, you can get it stable, and then you can just slide it right onto your duct work. Great. Super simple. Dig Another it. thing, safety-wise, all of our machines come with a handle that goes onto the back shaft wow. in the event that the power shuts off. <laughs> and you do have to get back here Model T style right, and start right, cranking right, this thing. Right, right. Wow. It's very important and to that's have. A standard, that's standard issue. I don't have to like standard call issue. my engineer. I don't have to modify yeah. my machine. That just comes in the crate. Exactly. Wow. And then your chain is inside. This is chain driven. Wondering. It's connecting to this motor. Okay. You can kind of see a little bit of the chain in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can just pop this off with an Allen wrench super easily. Take this off sure. while your machine is off and right. get that all lubed up and, right, right, and right, ready right, to rock. Right. So this little case is, is about safety. Exactly. It's protecting us from access to that chain. Yep. Wow, that's great. And of course, you see the uh, thermocouple oh, yeah. wire here. That's the uh, one that goes to the inlet air, Got so it. you know that temperature. Just okay. wanted to mention that. Sure. That's Down important. here, you see a little blue valve. That's for your pilot light. Right, right. So you even have control of the pilot light flame. Oh, absolutely. Right, 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 because that's important. Yeah, so you're not wasting extra gas. Yeah, 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 for sure. Wow, that's excellent. Yep, absolutely. And then this is your gas valve. This is the digitally driven gas that's valve. That's a little different. The sensor for gas pressure. Okay. Um, and I, I really think that's about it, man. Okay, wow. Any other questions you have for me? I don't think so. I mean, you, we covered a lot. You covered a lot of great stuff. It, I'm really excited. I'm honest, the next question would be like, when can we fire it up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I want to do. I got to tell you, batches. as a roaster for, for many, many years, I've always had these these uh, wishes, you know, a wish list of things sure. that I could have. I, I, know I wish I had a thermocouple for this. <laughs> I wish I could see the pressure in my totally. system. I wish sure. that this read out on my profile right. software. Right, 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 yeah. This checks all of the boxes of my wish list. This is the machine that 
has the capacity, it has the power, it has the information, it has the control, right. it has everything that I want in a coffee roasting machine. Um, That's a great point. I think it checks more yeah. boxes than I have. Now we need I was some at, good green coffee. <laughs> I was at two thermal couples. Can I just get a second thermal couple? So yeah, I'm with you, hundred percent. Yeah, green, green yeah. coffee, some customers to serve it to. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, I can't wait to taste coffee from this machine. I'm with you. Uh, please get it, get some good green coffee and send it our way. Yeah. Well, I guess this is pretty much a wrap. So thank you guys for tuning in. We love spending time with you all. Um, this is Northeast Minneapolis, Mill City Roasters and Derek De La Paz. And I'm going to say goodbye. Yeah, Joe Morocco signing off. Have great. a great day. For sure. Thanks, Joe.